Florence. Are you ready for 26? I'm hoping they find someplace safe for Flora. Finally, they stopped. When Flora looked behind her, she couldn't see the camp any longer and their tracks were being covered by sleet. Oscar searched until he found a soft place in the snow. I'll start digging here. Is this a special place, asked Flora? Sophia looked uncomfortable. The falling sleet made her blink. She started to say something, but then began licking her front instead. It's okay, said Flora. She wanted to make this easier on her friend. My strength has been tested before. I've been working up to this moment. I think I'm ready. Sophia looked relieved. Good. You're going to have to stay away from the camp in this one pig home for a few days. Alone? A tiny stab of fear pricked Flora's heart. Staying in a hole reminded her of being down in the hold. This might be harder than she thought. Oscar dug away at the hole with short expert strokes. Should Oscar be digging that hard? Flora asked. He'll be fine. He's hurrying because he's looking forward to leaving with his team, Sophia said. But don't worry, I'll remember the way back here. Flora shivered from inside her coat. The cold felt as if it were squeezing her brain. This didn't make sense. An icy breeze sprang up and whisked her breath away in long white streams. She shook her head, trying to shake out the confusion. Oscar's head was out of the snow now. Plumes of powder shot from the hole. Flora shook her head again, this time with worry. He's sick, she said, hoping this didn't hurt the dog's feelings. I can help. I'm not sick. Breathing heavily, Oscar backed his head out of the hole, his sides heaving from effort. I'll be fine. Digging is good for dogs. It's like medicine. Oscar needs to dig fast, Sophia said, if he wants to get back to the camp before they leave. Flora stamped the snow. The crust broke under her feet and she sank up to her ankles. I don't understand. Sophia went on as if Flora hadn't spoken. Remember the new project is all about staying alive. Oscar's job is to lead the rescue crew. Your job is to keep out of sight for a while. What kind of job was that? If this was a special place, if this special place wasn't for training, then what? Do I stink? Is that the problem? Flora sniffed herself. Her hair smelled a little bit like dog from spending nights in the sh snow shelter, but that was hardly her fault. Oscar huffed and started digging again. Flora went on. Everybody says pigs stink, but I have clean habits, even if I don't lick myself all the time. You don't stink, said Sophia. Do you think I would curl up next to you every night if you were a stinky pig? I'll come back after the dogs have gone. What? What are you talking about? Oscar, stop ignoring me. Flora's voice trembled now, but she didn't care. If he could hear her with his head inside the hole, he didn't show it. Stop digging, she shouted into the wind. She moved to stop Oscar. Sophia stepped in front of Flora. Oscar is saving your life, she said. Don't you understand? You're in terrible danger. Flora sat down with a thump in the snow. I'm in danger? Oscar backed up and out of the hole to catch his breath. Flora continued. I, I don't need a special place. For a sled pig, having an adventure is like medicine. Sophia gave her a pitying look. They didn't bring you along to be a sled pig. They didn't? Flora looked at Oscar. Nope, he shook his head. If you're saying that because you're sick and you're afraid I'll take over your lead dog spot, Flora faltered and then went on. You should know you don't have to worry. I won't. Oscar turned back to the hole. I'll clean out that last little bit. It's almost ready. Flora jumped up. Why won't somebody just say what's going on? Calm down, said Sophia. He's digging you a hiding place, a new home for a little while until the danger is past. But I want us to face the danger together, like a team. Sophia glared at Flora. I don't need a team, remember? And I'm cold and wet. This business of trying to keep others safe is starting to put my whiskers in a knot. Flora paced in an angry circle, churning up the ice and snow under her feet. She paid no attention to the sharp edges, nicking her legs. It was just like Sophia to forget that she had help had needed help from the rats. 
I haven't been any trouble, Flora stopped pacing. Wait a minute, are you two trying to get rid of me? Oscar cleared his throat as if he wanted to say something but panted instead. Yes, she understood now. You're afraid of me, both of you. You know I'm strong and you think I'll take all the credit. Well, I can see through your plan and I have another plan. Goodbye. Flora marched off with her head high in the air. Oscar's voice floated through the wind to her. Where are you going? Back to camp, Flora answered without turning around. Then she realized she had no idea which direction camp was. She stopped and cast her head back and forth trying to remember. Nothing was familiar and everything was familiar. All the land looked the same, just plain and white. She turned and walked back to the dog and cat who were still watching her. I decided to give you a chance to follow me. Sophia's tail switched impatiently in the snow. A sled dog would never lose his way home. Flora looked at Oscar who blinked and shifted his feet. A sled dog has an unfailing sense of direction, said Sophia. He has broad shoulders for pulling and he has big padded feet which don't break through the crust. Flora looked at the ground where her hooves had chopped up the snow and ice. She felt miserable, lost, and terribly lonely, even though she was not yet alone. Let's pretend you're right for a minute. Why would they have brought me along if I wasn't to be a sled pig? Sophia shook snow off her shoulder. I didn't want to tell you because I thought you would figure it out for yourself. Figure it out? The wind seemed to stop for a moment and silence filled Flora's ears. Food, said Sophia. What a way to end a chapter. That was the end of chapter 26. Let's keep reading. Chapter 27. I don't think she's going to take it very well, do you? I wouldn't. Flora's head felt light. She felt sick and wanted to lie down. She sat with a thud. Oscar sighed. Pulling is for dogs. Do you think Amos likes you because of your personality? Think about it, said Sophia. They want you on their adventure, all right, but not for the reason you think. No, Flora whispered, but the signs were all there. She had a purpose on this expedition, and it had been nothing to do with how smart she was and how brave and strong. She was food. Oscar turned and sniffed at the hole he had finished. He gave the piled snow at the entrance a swipe. I think it's big enough now. Flora stood up and backed into her. Her ears were ringing and she barely noticed when her friend said goodbye. Sophia stopped once and looked back, but it had begun to snow and they were soon out of sight. Flora slid in deeper and curled up. She found that her back legs could tuck inside the coat of her bot the bottom of her coat. The hole was warm as could be. She shivered anyway. The snowflakes filled the openings as if filling a grave. My goodness, I can't imagine how alone and sad she must be feeling. They're trying to protect her. They're good friends. That was a, such a short chapter. You know what? Let's continue reading. Let's read three chapters in this session. So let's read chapter 28. For two snowy days, Flora lay in her little cave. When she got thirsty, she ate snow. When she got hungry, she struggled up through the powder and walked around on, until her feet feeling eased, being careful never to lose sight of her frozen home. Cold white emptiness was everywhere and it pulled the hope from her heart. Don't give up. This time, the words didn't work. Flora tried to find a memory from her piglet days on the farm, a thought or a picture that would be a source of warmth to melt the ice in her mind. Luna. Flora worked hard to remember everything about her old friend, her face, the way she held her tail the color of her fur, the sound of her voice, and a warm light came. Flora could almost hear the conversations about dogs and stars and even the ocean. Luna seemed to know how mu so much about life. Flora's thoughts froze. She tried not to think, yet she couldn't stop the truth from crowding in. Luna knew all that time how Flora would end up. I'm a fool, a big fat fool. Well, not fat really, at least not anymore. 
This was a cruel world she had been born into, all pink and squirming. She never wanted to see reality. Now, like the cold, it was impossible to ignore. She curled into a tight ball. At the end of two days, Flora had, a, had to fight a growing feeling of panic. By now, Oscar would be off with the door dog team, and she was sure Sophia had tried to figure out the way back to her and couldn't. Her thoughts turned darker. Perhaps she had been left here to die. Perhaps, probably her friends had chosen this fate for her, starvation versus the knife. Flora wasn't sure which she would have chosen, but she didn't like someone else choosing for her. Then she thought she heard Sophia calling her name. It sounded like a voice from a dream. Flora wanted to jump up and shake off her snow hole like a dirty blanket. She wanted to race out and be found. But things were different now. She was food. She had to be looked after, protected like a baby. She was a burden, not a team member. She pushed her head through the thin roof. Oscar was there. He was sniffing around in circles. Sophia was sitting and calling. When Oscar saw her, he came running up and licked her chin. Sophia ran a few steps too, but then catching herself, slowed to a dignified walk. Flora stumbled out on legs that felt stiff and wooden. She nosed the cat in the ribs. She had to admit she was delighted to see her friends again, but she didn't want to be delighted. I see you're still alive. Sophia gave in to acting like a kitten and batted Flora's cheeks with a paw. It wasn't too bad. This huge lie was the only thing Flora could think of to say. We would have come back sooner if it was possible, said Sophia. It's safe now. Amos is gone. Flora changed the subject. What are you still doing here, Oscar? I thought you should be out pulling. Oscar looked to the horizon and didn't answer. They wouldn't take him, Sophia said softly. He tried. He stood in the lead spot when it was time to get in the harness, but they wouldn't hook him up. Smart, if you ask me, he's not well. Pulling is like medicine, said Oscar. You wouldn't understand. Flora winced. Poor Oscar. He was almost as upset, upset as Alaric, said Sophia. They both got left behind. As Oscar led them back to camp, Sophia continued on about how Amos had screamed and waved his knives at everyone until the whole camp was out searching for Flora and how he had tried to use the dogs to track his escaped pig. Oscar thought ahead, though. Sophia glanced at Oscar. He dragged the search team in one wrong direction after another. Of course, they had never even gotten close to your hiding place. Flora wanted to smile. She wanted to dance around and laugh at the image of Big Amos thundering about in the wrong places. But she felt emptied, hollowed out. They finally had to give up, Sophia said. Amos and the other man, men finished loading and hooked up the dogs. Off they went to get help. Only the captain and the sailor with the broken legs stayed behind with Alaric. Why didn't they take the captain? asked Flora. Too sick to travel. Oscar looked back at them to answer. And wait, sled dogs are strong, but every pound counts. They weren't enough, there weren't enough of us, of them to do the job. I could have pulled though, they needed me. Pulling is like medicine for a sled dog. He hung his head. You said that already, said Sophia. Well, it's true. Sophia caught Flora's eye and shook her head. Twice on the walk back, Flora noticed Oscar breathing extra hard. Something rattled in his throat whenever he got winded. Sophia would pretend to be tired and need to rest, and they would all stop until Oscar looked able to go on. It was during the stops that Flora noticed how hungry she was, hungry enough to eat a boot, laces and all. Where were the men and dogs going, she asked. Did they change their minds and head for the food station? No, they're going north, said, north, said Oscar. Anywhere there might be people, they'll put to sea when they find a good place. If they can find help, they'll come back the same way, I expect. If they don't find help, Flora knew how that sentence ended. If they came back without finding help, they'd think about killing the pig. And that is the end of chapter 28. It's getting so interesting. All right, my love.
say time to say goodbye. Kisses for the family. I love you.